Life is hard. Life but then you hard. overcome it because you went to therapy and have good coping strategies. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Pamela! Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be doing a little self-care Saturday and we're going to be tie-dyeing. Switching it up. Yeah. Why are we switching it up? Usually we talk about dogs and dog stuff. So we thought we'd incorporate a little bit more of our life with you guys and share a little bit more about professional life. So if you didn't know, Ant and I are both in grad school. I'm doing a dual master's in public ah. I'm doing a dual master's in public health and social work while Anthony is... I'm a doctoral candidate in clinical psychology, and so in addition to being Pavlov and Maslow's parents, we're also clinicians in mental health. And with 2020 being really challenging, that has facilitated us to take better care of ourselves, hence tie-dye. Um, <laughs> tired? Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, we're graduate students. We're always tired. In addition to taking care of ourselves, we also wanted to use our channel as a, a way to talk about mental health. So today, in addition to taking care of ourselves, doing some tie-dye, we're going to talk about how to find a therapist. And we both had unique experiences in this process because, well, for one, we've both been clients of psychotherapy, um, but we also have different e levels of expertise in how to navigate the process. On a tie-dye note, we are making some shirts for us, but as well as our dog. <laughs> so this is going to be for Pavlov, and this is going to be for Maslow. Ten bucks on Amazon, y'all, so check it out. I will and, leave some of the links for these below. And Tram got a super cute one. Hers is all cropped. Hers has, hers has holes in it. It's all cute. <laughs> and I got a regular white t-shirt because I didn't order it. We are going to start the tie-dyeing shirts and talk to y'all a little bit about how to find a therapist. Well, how does someone know that they should go to therapy? One reason I've gone to therapy in the past is like I had a big crisis in my life and I needed to talk to someone about it mm -hmm. who kind of didn't really know what was going on, which is weird when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Isn't it weird to like talk to someone who doesn't know what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. It's like counterintuitive. Like sometimes I feel like, wouldn't you want to talk to someone who understands your life already? Mm -hmm. Um. So what, like, what do you think are the benefits of like talking to someone who has no idea what's going on? Well, yeah, and I, that's a great that's a great point because I think that when I went to get therapy, it was it was a little different. It was to get an opinion or to talk to someone who didn't know what was going on. Uh -huh. Um. And I don't think I had like a maybe a significant crisis. But I think that I was spending a lot of time talking to you about all my problems in a way that made it challenging for us to even like have our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, we would go on walks and I would just kind of be spilling over my stress and talking about it. And um, it, was, it was kind of in a way, I didn't want to burden you. And you never said I was burdening you, but I think that like just having, paying someone to talk to and listen to me was what I needed. Um, just to be able to process things and to, in a way, like get a third third person's perspective on it. Because obviously everything that I was sharing with you, you were familiar with the process and in a way that was like, that biases your perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think people don't think about this, but sometimes on our end, um, being in like a mental health field, a lot of our friends and family come to us when they are having some issues or problems and... While I love like being that person for them, um, I think what people don't consider is like it can be really burdensome sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Like obviously I love talking to people about their problems, but it kind of gets in the way of like your friendship sometimes or the relationship that you have with them because it becomes less about like you developing your relationship together or like talking about other things or like yeah, and it becomes more of like a health seeking process, you know? Yeah, and I think that when it when it comes to therapy, you're establishing a relationship with someone. And you're establishing a very specific relationship in which you talk, they listen, and they help you help you process what's going on. That's a very that's a very specific relationship because even though you might have friends who listen to you and help you with what's going on, they also have other responsibilities in that relationship, such as like them talking about their problems and you guys having fun together. And you, you know, it, not everything in a, a friendship is about helping. Yeah, and like another thing is like friends and family, 
can also have like their own biases and like their own stake in your life. So if they're going through a problem and like say that problem or like the solution to that problem benefited them but didn't really benefit you, like they might be more inclined to like give you a solution that's like biased towards what they want. Yeah. Right? Like, uh -huh. oh. I think that like, you know, people don't even realize they're doing it. No. You know, this isn't to say like your friends have a have a ulterior motive about, you know, what you should do with your life. But I think that are you looking for something? Gloves. 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 Yes. Um gloves. <laughs> I already got some on my hands because I forgot to put them on gloves. Oh sure. yeah, I'll put some gloves on. Um yeah, like your therapist doesn't know the people in your life, right? Their only concern is you. And so uh when when let's say you have a relationship issue and you're saying like, I don't know, me and Tram have an issue and we go to our friend. Our friend knows me, but our friend also knows Tram and like has that bias in it. And so when you talk to a therapist, they're just taking the information and then really only caring about you, right? Yeah. Um, Their priority is like your mental well-being, mm -hmm. right? And like with people in our lives, their priorities are elsewhere. Yeah. At this point, for whatever reason, you've decided that you, you want to go to therapy. It could be because you're going through a crisis, it could be because you just want someone to talk to, you could be lonely. Where do you start? Oh, okay. I would start with more logistical things. So, do you have insurance? And what kind of insurance do you have? Because that plays a big factor in actually like who you can see. It's actually cheaper if you have health insurance and you can see someone in your network um, because then you only have to pay for the copay. So that's that's the first piece of advice is if you have insurance, make sure that you uh, you use it. Or at least like that might be one of the first things that you consider when you go and find a clinician. Because um, that's going to give you um, some guidance on where to look to and how to reduce the cost um, out of your pocket. If you don't have insurance um, for a certain level of income, there are a lot of like community-based organizations that provide therapy. So I will leave a resource in the link below if you need something like that and you can't afford therapy or don't have insurance right now because the insurance fucking shit in America fucking sucks. Fucking sucks. Okay, insurance in America is so classist and oppressive and it's fucked up and that's, that's all we me, have to say about that's that. That's me snapping, that's me snapping. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, so like no shame if you don't have insurance. It's such a privilege to have insurance in America and that's very fucked up that healthcare isn't a right for everybody. Um, the first is to dampen it. Just dampen that girl. Alright, alright. Oh, there's a dog here. We're dampening both sides to get it a little wet, wet. Like Did my it. shirt when it wet and then my shirt when it wet, wet. Such an old TikTok. Well, like six months ago. <laughs> Sorry, TikTok queen. You're so out of the loop, old man. I am. Spin it. <laughs> And then you kind of have like a little, like a rose like. Yeah, and then we get the rubber bands. Man, the maker, man. This is so ugly, you guys. Oh, yeah, because it's so qualitatively different in yours. Mine's great. That's why you're starting over. <laughs> okay, where's the rubber bands? Thank you. The reason we're talking about insurance is because you need to find therapists that accept insurance. In LA, there's hella therapists out there that do not accept insurance. So they only take clients who pay them 400 bucks per session or whatever it is. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but there are therapists out there who do take insurance. So yay! Yay! Um, some of the websites I've looked at and used are like Psychology Today. Oh, so they yeah. have a really good search engine um, and you can pick what type of insurance you have where your geographic location is, and luckily in the times of COVID, you can see them via telehealth, and that's really awesome. So right now, it might not really matter, but for me, I considered, like, if I, if life became back to normal, would I want to see the therapist in person? Don't email them. Call them. Call them and call a lot of them. Make a list of therapists that you're interested in. So let's say you know which insurance you have, you have a list of providers, you're on psychology today. What should you look for in choosing a therapist? Oh, that's 
Honestly, that's a lot of personal preference. Yeah. Like for me personally, I feel more comfortable talking to a female. I have a lot of like female-esque problems, right? So like yeah. I feel more comfortable discussing that with a female that might understand those problems a little better, like better than a male. Uh -huh. So like start there. Yeah, like, and why is it important to have that like match with like your therapist and you? Because at the end of the day, therapeutic alliances is probably the biggest predictor of outcome. Mm -hmm. So um, if you guys didn't know that, a lot of people think like, it's the type of therapy that matters. And like, yes it does, but what matters even more is like, do you trust your therapist? Yeah. Like, do you have a really strong connection with your therapist where you can feel honest and like, you know, yeah. be like talking to them about stuff. Yeah, what you're doing in therapy is you're forming a relationship with someone. Someone who you can trust, someone who you can believe will love you and support you no matter what you said or did or will do in the future. Um, and, and that matters, or at least uh, the characteristics of that person matters. Um, so for me, I was like, I want to have a male therapist because I want to talk to someone who I feel comfortable discussing like masculinity things with because that's a, a, an issue that I wanted to talk about in therapy. And while I could do that talking to a woman, I would feel more comfortable doing so with a male. And don't get all caught up into what that means about you. It just means you have a preference in who you feel comfortable with. And don't knock yourself for preferring a man or a woman or someone who's Asian or someone who's Latinx or black or LGBTQ, right? If you are, are having, if you identify with that community and you want a therapist who empathizes with that on a personal level, Go for it, right? Because whatever makes you feel comfortable talking to that person is going to be really helpful in the success of your therapy. Honestly, think of it as like, to me, as a woman, I consider like my hairstylist as an ethnicity. And that's really funny. But honestly, like I have fine, like thin Asian hair. Uh -huh. Like I need a hairstylist that understands how to work with my thin Asian hair. Uh. And that's like very similar to like therapy. Yeah. I need someone who will understand my experiences as like an Asian American woman. So anyway, that's why it would be important for me and I think for a lot of people when they look for a therapist is to find someone that they can like trust, that under that can like empathize with their situation. Yeah, that, 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 that congruency is so important. For sure. And it, it matters not just in terms of gender, or ethnicity, or race, but also like age. So my last therapist, he was he was older. He was an older black man. He was probably in his 60s or 70s. Um, and I definitely underestimated the importance of like age congruency. And the reason, or at least like the point in which I knew that that, that was a problem in our relationship was because I would talk and I would say like. I'd be like, yeah, so like this happened last week and I was really, hmm. I wouldn't say I was like upset, but I was like, I don't know, maybe a little frustrated. And he stopped me and he goes, Anthony, you say like a lot in our in our when you when you speak. You should say that less. I'm gonna send you an article on it. And I was like, bruh, like that's that's just how I talk. And I told him that. I was like, no, you know, doctor, that's that's how I talk, and I'm not really concerned about changing it. That's not why I'm in therapy. Um That's not your like goal. That's not my goal. But it was his goal, and that, that was an, an instance in which a therapist had a hard time putting their biases aside about what he felt comfortable with and maybe what I felt comfortable with. And he yeah. said, oh, that's something that a bunch of people in your generation say. They say like a lot. And I'm like, yeah. So I, I realized I want to talk to someone who doesn't maybe get caught up in the way that I communicate, and that when they talk to me, that's how I feel like we're kind of on the same level. And when I talk to my clients, I talk just like how I talk now, right? To where like they understand that I have that that age congruency, that culture congruency, and I might not be a good fit as a, with a therapist with someone maybe who's a little older too. What do we do next? Do we put this in a bag? Yeah, I put mine in. So yeah, I just put mine in like a plastic bag, and then we just let it sit there for a few hours. So we'll have to film this a little later to show y'all what it looks like. After you've contacted them, wait about a week to see who, what options you have. If they don't get to back to you after a couple days, they're probably not going to get back to you. Then you have a list of a couple therapists who are accepting clients, and then you can proceed. 
And when it comes to finding a therapist, it's like dating. You don't have to lock into one, right? Because you're forming a, a, a long-term intimate relationship with this person. And by intimate, it's like you're disclosing really personal shit to them. Um, so you don't have to stick with the first person you, you talk to. You can set up first sessions with a bunch of different therapists if you want. Um, you could see a therapist for a couple sessions and decide you don't like them and go to a different one. You could, you can after a month or a couple months not want to see this therapist anymore and go find a different one, right? That's okay. I'm going to do another spiral. Whack. Whack. This yellow is very... I love the yellow. You don't like it? No, I do. Oh man, tie-dye requires patience and precision and... Well, I like that you can kind of be a little messy with it, you know? It's like fun. No, I got It's gonna come out green. <laughs> Bro, I'm, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Therapy is like, it's just for me, you know? Yeah. Therapy is for me. Okay. Thanks, Lord DIY, for this fantastic tie-dye kit in Self-Care Saturday. It was so much fun, and we highly recommend um, that if you're looking for something to do while you're locked up inside home, but also you need to relieve some stress, and you are contemplating therapy, get this shit. It's fantastic. Yeah, I really thought we were just going to dip it like Easter eggs. See you soon. Comment below if you have any more questions about finding a therapist and we will try our best to answer them. Okay, we're in our laundry room. Time to rinse these bad boys. Right. Keep the rubber bands on first. All right. Cool water. Oh, this is mine? Yes, it's yours, it's cute. This is my shirt. Oh, I love it, it looks so good. It's so bright. They look great. Whoa, look at that. Looks awesome. They'll both look really good. I like how different they are. Ooh. Whoa! Whoa! That looks so good. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so jealous. That yeah, looks so looks good. Really good. Oh my god, that one's amazing. I wish I did a circle. Oh my god. How cool. <laughs> See you later.